I get the Velcro lined up. How do I sound like Adam Sandler? What's happening, my fellow geeks and geek ads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. And today is an explanation slash demonstration video on how I upgraded my white sheep leather Captain America Endgame suit using Lee Hurley's amazing upgrade kit. Now, massive disclaimer, massive explanation. So, unfortunately, half of the demonstration footage has been lost. What happened is I had the raw footage of applying the upgrade kit doing the belt, doing the harness, customizing them. I had them in a folder. I had a very messy looking desktop and I had to drag all those files and folders into one folder to have a clean desktop for a photo I needed to take for an upcoming Logitech campaign. If anyone has a Mac and has ever had this before, it, it created what's called aliases and I deleted the original files because I thought the new ones would be in the folder. Went to go open them and it said Captain America suit video alias with a little arrow at the corner of the folder. I already know a lot of Mac users are probably rolling their eyes and thinking this fucking idiot, I know where this is going. So I had deleted the original folder thinking there's a copy in there, went in there and it said this is an alias. If you can recover the other folder, we can link them together. If not, there is nothing in there. So that is amazing. I then went and checked the original SD card and because I was filming other projects for other people, I had deleted those files off the SD card to make room and I only managed to salvage me doing the airbrushing on the midsection here as well as sandpapering the gloves. So I really do apologize but like I said I'm going to do my best to show you guys and explain every step of the way um, leading up to the footage that I am able to salvage. So first things first. Lee Hurley's upgrade kit is a must for the white sheep leather suit and of course we have Jordan's wonderful helmet from Jordan's Ironic Armory on my live cast. So what I'm going to do is bring the camera in closer and explain to you guys the process of applying the chest upgrade and then we're going to go into the shoulder upgrade and then from there show you guys how I customize the belt. That includes taking a mold of the original buckle. Okay so Lee's kit consists of the star, the starburst panel. We have two scale panels here and two scale panels here. We also have this piece here that kind of links up and makes these two panels nice and flush and of course the shoulder bells but we're going to be focusing on the chest portion first. So what we have here is a bib. And under the bib, you can see the original scales. Now, I did not get rid of the original scales. What I actually did is I quick unpicked the original starburst, removed that, removed the metal star that came with it, and I left these scales as a base because they're not three-dimensional, they're quite flat, and it actually helps as a base for gluing all this down. So you see the snaps that are in there? They originally came with a suit, and I actually had to Dremel holes in the scale pieces here. These, this is all made of urethane, so I had to Dremel in some holes here so that the snaps would fit in place and snap in like so. So I kid you not, the entire upgrade kit was glued down with the cheap and nasty super glue from Bunnings. So what I actually did was glued all of these pieces together first before even gluing it against the suit. So that means running glue along the side of the starburst here and gluing those two pieces of urethane together so we have one big beautiful panel. I then lined it all up and I then actually had to do some trimming just here where the collar is so it just looked all nice, neat and flush because it is a raw kit mind you, there is some trimming required. I then started from the inside out with gluing it all down and I actually had had the bib laid down flat on a workbench. I didn't have it on this mannequin, I had it all laid flat. And then the last step was gluing the star in and then gluing in this seam piece here. Now there was some cutting required. There was a lot of raw excess urethane here and I just got a uh, Stanley knife and just sliced it up here like so. Now in terms of the shoulder bells, this is something you really need to listen to. I had originally glued the shoulder bells on the wrong side. So this is the correct way to do it. You have to remember the scale points here have to face forward geeks and geekettes. I unfortunately made that mistake, uh, but the original shoulder bells, that's actually remnants of the original shoulder bell. So what I did was the original piece here with the scales, the original white sheep leather scales and the A, quick unpicked, gutted, tore out. And a lot of people, what, are they, what they've been doing is getting the fabric and bunching it 
under these new shoulder bells. But I kind of like the remnants here of the original shoulder bells. It's just like an extra kind of layer of plating. And again, just using the cheap and nasty super glue, just gluing them down in place. But I originally had them glued on the wrong side. So what I actually had to do, because that cheap and nasty super glue literally fuses these two pieces together, I had to go along with a Stanley knife and cut out the original lower plating here of the shoulder bell, take it out. And because it is symmetrical, it fit exactly the same on the other side and vice versa. I actually glued these bad boys in properly this morning. So remember, if you are using Lee's kit, these scale points have to face forward. Alrighty, let's talk about the belt. First things first is I went along the whole entire piece of the belt with some 120 grit sandpaper and just sanded these edges here just to give it some scuffing effect. Now I did permanently fix these pouches in place Place. They do have snap fasteners at the top. I then got some tin snips and snipped them off and they are velcroed on So took the velcro off permanently glued them in place with the cheap and nasty super glue Now I did actually grab the flat and pull it down as tight as I can to shorten them and glued them in place Now in terms of weathering these buckles here and also the buckles on the harness It was just a black oil color. That's all it was from spotlight Brush it on and you leave it for about half an hour and you literally just get a paper towel, wipe off the excess and in about, in about a day's time, it is fully dried and won't come off and smudge on your fingers. Now, the buckle. Because the buckle was so rigid, it's cast in aluminium, I think it was. Um, I wanted a buckle that could flex and bend with the curvature of the torso. So what I did was I took a one-off silicon mold of the original buckle. And what I then did was brush in some aluminium powder and then made a flexible urethane casting. And this is it. So this is cast in FlexiCast 45 from Barnes with the pigment powder permanently embedded in it, which is exactly what you want. There is no weathering on this Geeks and Geek Outs. This is exactly how it turned out fresh out of the mold. And this is the OG one that I have right here, but I wanted to do a special casting for this video to show you guys just how it looks without it being glued down onto the buckle. And of course, using the cheap and nasty super glue, gluing it down onto the strap. Now, before I go on any further, just want to show you guys that I did, in fact, put some Velcro on the bib and also the belt. So this is uh, self-adhering Velcro strips I got from Bunnings, but I actually put some cheap and nasty super glue on just as a bit of insurance to stick them on here. And there's also a panel on the side here and on the other side, and as you can see right there, they line up perfectly. And doing that just kind of adds a bit of stability to the belt. It's not gonna slide down, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay exactly in place here on the bib. So keep in mind at the end of this video, I am gonna be demonstrating the suit on yours truly. I did have to take uh, the undergarment to the tailor. So what they did is they actually took the sleeves up, they actually extended the zip and tightened the forearms because it was quite loose on my forearms and came down quite a bit and that inhibited the way the gloves fit. There was a lot of material bunched into the gloves if that makes sense. So I highly recommend either going to a tailor or doing it yourself. I would love to have done it myself but I do not have the right equipment because of this stretch fabric, this textured stretch fabric. You need the proper machinery um, and they did a fantastic job and I will show you guys just the difference with how it looked before to how much tighter and more streamlined it is on my arms now. Now the torso harness, the exact same method Method as the belt, just sandpaper, and then applied that black oil color onto the buckle here. Let it sit for about half an hour, wiped off the excess. Now for the gloves, it was very simple. Just some 120 grit sandpaper, and just sanding as you please all over the gloves. Now I actually have seen some people darken their gloves with a leather dye, but for the most part, I actually like the texture on this once you sandpaper it, especially along the seam lines, if that makes sense. Now you can also get these bad boys and kind of smush them into the dirt or along gravel, just, just gonna rough them up even more. So the overall process is pretty simple, Geeks and Geek It's The only real fiddly part was applying the chest area, the chest scales and the starburst. It's just a matter of lining it up and kind of making sure it's all gonna sit properly, especially when you're wearing it. It's a bit different to laying it down flat as opposed to wearing it with the curvature of your chest. Now I wanna show you guys something that I did with the two rear bib panels. So we've got the lower back and the upper back, but what I did did was I applied some of that Velcro on here. So what I noticed when I had my Infinity War suit, when I had the harness on, it kind of bunched and 
kind of almost, you know, push this piece up a bit. But having a Velcro system in place here actually just helps it keep it flush against the back, especially when you've got your harness on. Sometimes when you've got to put your suit on by yourself and you put that harness on, it kind of pushes this up, but having this in place will not allow that to happen. All right, the abdominal section. We have some footage, some usable footage, which is amazing. So this was all done with an airbrush. So the first step was to load in some watered down brown shoe polish into my airbrush, and I had it dialed out as much as possible. So it was a massive spray going all over. So you want to stand back about this much with the airbrush, and you'll see right here with the video footage that was just kind of misting it over just to get a kind of base brown slash soil look going on. Then after I cleaned my airbrush out, I got some very lightly watered down black shoe polish and then went in all the crevices here with the airbrush as you see right here. It just really brings a lot of depth to the suit. And I actually do want to revisit it a bit and brown it just a little bit more, especially these two panels here as the obliques are a bit more browner than these panels here. Now the gaiters that come with the original suit are pretty decent, but if you're looking for something a bit more high quality, there is of course like Linda who does amazing leather work. Uh, but for the most part, in terms of weathering these, it's just some 120 grit sandpaper and just doing your thing over and over until you find that happy medium. It might also be worth hitting it with some baby powder, dusting off the excess and spraying them with a matte sealer. Now the look of these also depends on what underboots you're using. These are just my Doc Martens that I use for the Crow and Captain Boomerang. Anything else that's a bit more chunky, it's really gonna make the bottom here not sit flush on the boot. So especially like the seam line along here, just grab some sandpaper. Give it a nice scuff. All right, geeks and geekettes, I hope I've explained that as best as possible, giving the technical glitch that happened with the original footage. So it's time to try this bad boy on. I'll show you guys how it looks, how it moves, and just the kind of before and after. When I initially got the suit and did that unboxing video for you guys. Now before I do, the overall subtle dusty weathering is just baby powder. Just getting baby powder on a brush and brushing it into certain crevices here and there but a little will go a long way. You don't want to put a lot on this type of fabric because it really absorbs the baby powder. And if worse comes to worse, just give it a good slap and it will come out of the fabric and then you can kind of buff it in. All right, with that being said, it's time to suit up and show you guys the final result after customizing my white sheep leather Captain America Endgame suit with Lee Hurley's fantastic upgrade kit and Jordan's amazing helmet from Jordan's Ironic Armory. So just to give you guys a good idea of the before shot of the sleeves, even though they are tucked into the gloves, this is the day I got the suit, as you can see right here from that surprise unboxing video. And this is the end result after taking these to the tailor. They actually had to take the zip up a bit more, but they just feel a lot more streamlined and a lot more comfortable, especially with the gloves on. Now I'll say it before and I'll say it again, I love the design of these suits because it is obviously based off Chris Evans' suit and the way it was engineered. Here you go, just give you guys a good look at the gaiters. So ideally, I do need to put some Velcro tabs on here so you can Velcro these straps back here so it looks a bit more flush and you know, these things aren't poking out and sticking out like dog's balls. Now, like I said, try and wear a streamlined boot. These are Doc Martens, my black Doc Martens that I've used for previous cosplays. Anything that's a bit more chunky, like a chunky tactical boot, it's really just gonna blow out this area here and not make these portions here sit flush over the boot. All right, time for the rest of the suit. One thing about these suits though, they are extremely hot. I do love how stretchy this fabric is, the new textured fabric, but holy hell, just like the Cordura, it gets sweaty. So this is pretty much it guys, the updates and upgrades for the Captain America white sheep leather Endgame Super, pretty much done and dusted. Still probably gonna go in and do some pieces here in there, but for the most part, I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Get in there, you bastard. And again, with that textured stretch fabric, it just, everything just moves perfectly. And I am really grateful for Chris Radder for giving me the heads up about the shoulder bells because they sit a lot better now on my figure. So I'm actually probably going to go in with the belt and the harness and maybe airbrush a lighter brown at some point, much like these gloves here to kind of match the look here. Because they, from what I can see on the camera, they almost look like a burgundy red sometimes, which don't get me wrong, looks pretty cool. But from what I've seen on the screen use suit, uh, the leather for the harness and the belt is pretty much like the brown here on the gloves. Now, of course, for good measure, we got to try on Jordan's beautiful helmet, as well as the Marvel Legends shield that I've just got sitting over there, which I am probably going to do the crack shield at some point. So that is going to be a whole other video in itself. 
I get the Velcro lined up. How do I sound like Adam Sandler? Ah, beautiful. I actually need to tighten that chin strap a bit. Alrighty. I think that pretty much completes the look. So I bought this shield about two weeks ago from Zing. It's a pop culture store here in Sydney. It was about 198 Australian bucks. So I was gonna give it the full nice metallic look treatment, but I think we gotta go in and do the full battle damage crack shield look geeks and geekettes. I think it'd just be a nice crowning touch with this cosplay as well as a nice replica of Milnir. So guys, that is it. The Captain America White Sheep Leather Endgame Suit Upgrade and Customization is pretty much done and dusted. Like I said, I'm probably gonna go in and do some extra details here and there, like for example, the gaiters on the boots, add the Velcro tabs on the straps there, and probably do a little bit of fine tuning on the harness and the belt, but for the most part, I'm gonna be calling it a day. Now, again, I do apologize for the technical glitch with the original footage of me gluing down Lee's upgrade kit, but I hope I was able to explain it as best as possible. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Wherever you are in the world, have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.